The current leading candidate to be the Republican nominee for president of the United States is facing 91 charges in four indictments and has been impeached twice. Not the best candidate for president of the United States. Problem is, the other candidates aren't great either. Like the man of the moment, Vivek Ramaswamy, a billionaire entrepreneur, author, and political newcomer who has a lot to say and a lot of it not good. Let us be honest as Republicans. I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for, so I can say this. The climate change oh, whoa, agenda whoa, 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 whoa. is a hoax. I'm sure the boogeyman white supremacist exists somewhere in America. I've just never met him. <laughs> never seen one. Never met one in my life, right? Maybe I'll meet a, uh, maybe I'll meet a unicorn sooner. Ayanna Presley, she's in the Congress today. She's a member of the squad. Her words, not mine. We don't want any more black faces that don't want to be a black voice. Ibram Kendi wrote the book, How to Be an Anti-Racist. Here's what it says. Opening lines. The remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination. These aren't my words. These are the words of the modern grand wizards of the modern KKK. Really. Helping us launch our new segment, I'm Just Not That Into You, either, is a former Republican congressman from Florida and MSNBC political analyst David Jolly. David is no longer with the Republican Party. David, I wanted to have a segment where we focus on why any Republican candidate for president is bad for America, period. I know we spend a lot of time on our show and other shows talking about Donald Trump, but I think it's important to highlight why the other candidates are just terrible, too. So let's start with what you just heard in that segment at the beginning from Vivek Ramaswamy. Yesterday, in an interview with Reverend Al Sharpton on Politics Nation, Vivek doubles down on his comments regarding Massachusetts Representative Ayanna Presley and the KKK. It was a tense moment. Take a quick listen. Have you taken any time to reflect upon the possibility that comparing your political rivals to murderous terrorists might put their lives in danger at a time when hate crimes are on the rise? Or do you just don't care? Yes, I do think there are echoes of a historical ugly racism in this country now showing up in new clothing. To say we and don't want, want to lead wait, us to wait, as wait, the next wait, president no, just a is a to united say that nation we do not want where we don't actually judge each other on the color of our skin. To say that is not going with sheets and burning crosses and lynching people. She, if she said something you disagree not, with, the point I'm you, making. The, 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 you cannot equate Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan with somebody saying something that you think is a little controversial or a little too far. S some of our relatives so were Sharpton, terrorized Reverend by the Sharpton, Ku Klux Klan. I, I'm trying to get you to Reverend understand Sharpton, the I know pain you're intellectually honest. I know you're an intellectually honest guy, and so I will remind you that Hakeem Jeffries drew analogies between Donald Trump and the Ku Klux Klan, and I don't think you had him on pressing him in the same way. I, I mean, David, the GOP specializes in the whataboutism here, but, I mean, why is somebody like Vivek Ramaswamy, who himself is a minority, doubling down on this idea that it's okay to make those comparisons between the KKK and Ayanna Presley and Embriam Kandi? Yeah, Katie, with Vivek Ramaswamy, you get what it would have looked like if Rush Limbaugh had run for president in 1994, because he does carry the brashness of Donald Trump. He's not owned by anybody. He likes to use that line. But his ideology and his appeal to base conservatism sounds a lot like Rush Limbaugh and Newt Gingrich in 1994. And I love that you're investigating all of the Republican candidates, because I've long been of the opinion that Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis provide unique challenges to the Constitution, danger to the Constitution. They would act extra constitutionally. But among the other also Rams are people like Vivek Ramaswamy, whose politics are dangerous on issues of race and culture, but on issues of, of ceding land and, uh, to Vladimir Putin or disenfranchising youth voters under 25 or abolishing federal law enforcement. Those are dangerous policies. And so Vivek had a moment at the debate. I think the last 10 days has clarified it in many ways was his coming out night. But since then, you see both the opposition research from other candidates, but also the deep dive into his true policies. They are dangerous and they are wrong for the country. And let's continue to take that deep dive, David, into the policies that he would bring if he were elected to office. 
when it comes to abortion access. He says that abortion is murder. He would not support a federal abortion ban, but he does support a six-week state ban. When it comes to climate change, he says it's a hoax. When it comes to immigration, he supports universally deporting undocumented immigrants. He opposes any path to legal residence. He's criticized USA to Ukraine, as you've mentioned there. He says being transgender is a mental illness. He believes the FBI should be abolished and thinks the government has told us lies about 9-11. How how dangerous is it for us as Americans to underestimate somebody like Vivek Ramaswamy? I actually would disagree with you, David. I think he's beholden to Donald Trump. He claims he doesn't belong to anyone or nobody owns oh, sure. him. But I do think that Donald Trump clearly is a little bit of a puppeteer here. Sure. Listen, the most dangerous thing about Vivek Ramaswamy is everything you just listed, Katie, is exactly what Republican voters want and what they want to hear. And it's why he did well at the debate. Vivek Ramaswamy, for all this brashness, and kind of the coming out, getting to know him at the debate stage. And for Ron DeSantis, for all of his awkwardness and, and instability, if you will, at the debate stage, those two were actually repeating back to Republican voters what they wanted to hear. And the danger is that they reflect a cultural movement in the United States that's willing to take us back decades on critical issues for protected classes, on race, gender, equity, on the LGBT community. But I think to your point about the politics of Donald Trump, there is a similarity, and what Donald Trump was gifted in Ramaswamy is a foil for Ron DeSantis. Donald Trump mm -hmm. wants to stay above the field. He doesn't want to engage in hand-to-hand -hand politics in Iowa and New Hampshire with DeSantis because it will elevate him. But in Ramaswamy, he now has a surrogate. And Ramaswamy is not going to be president. He's not going to overtake Donald Trump. So Donald Trump can continue to pat him on the back and say, I really like this guy, Vivek. He even sent out a, a true social comment saying, way to go, Vivek. Vivek will be the vessel now for Donald Trump to continue to spoil Ron DeSantis' chances. Glenn Beck asking Donald Trump a few days ago what he thought about Vivek Ramaswamy serving as vice president. A lot of us believe that a lot of the GOP, you know, candidates are auditioning constantly for the role of vice president. This is what Donald Trump had to say, quote, I think he's great. He's starting to get out there a little bit. He's getting a little bit controversial. I mean, for Donald Trump to say that someone else is getting to be a little controversial, I think is ridiculous. But I see Vivek Ramaswamy kind of as like a Napoleonic version of Donald Trump. But is yeah. there, do you think, a very real possibility of a VP nom with Donald Trump for Vivek Ramaswamy? No, because his skin color is brown and it's today's Republican Party. And I hate to be that blunt about it, no, but I, I would be surprised it. to see any. Hey, you know, look, to see that type of diversity on a Republican ticket in 24, I just think is highly unlikely for where the politics are. It's shameful to acknowledge that, but it's an observation. I do think what you're seeing in Donald Trump is some of Ramaswamy's policies, though they reflect kind of the base side with Putin, uh, we shouldn't help Ukraine. When it comes to no aid to Israel and some of these other issues, Donald Trump has made commitments to those demographics. And so it is hard for him to wrestle with that. But that's fine. The 9-11 conspiracies, Donald Trump really doesn't want to touch them. It's not that Donald Trump's unwilling to. It's just he doesn't want to spend his time and voice on those issues where Ramaswamy is trying to make a name for himself. So he's out there with the crazy comments.